Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, video series so on studying and living in Denmark. So this is the last video series. If you have not seen, check the previous four videos about studying masters in Denmark, how you prepare for that, what, how can you get a full scholarship, what is the cost of living. So in this video, we'll specifically focus on working in Denmark. We have with us Anjali Burma from India. She finished her masters recently in Southern Denmark University and she got a full scholarship. She also worked with companies during her master so we'll discuss about the working experience so let's start with the first uh, question how is the work culture and do you have like a hierarchical structure that we have in india uh, I would like to say the work culture in Denmark is really good because in India I used to work around 9.5 hours and it was in shifts. I, as you know, in many multinational companies in India, you work in shifts and everything. But here in Denmark, the working culture is super good. Like you work from 8 to 4 or 7 to 3. It's only 8 hours per day and it's it's quite it's it's very balancing the work life and your personal life is very very balancing uh in india we had limited number of sick leaves like you can take only five or ten sick leaves on one year here in denmark there's nothing like that even you get leave when you become a parent so so the work life culture is really really good in denmark it, it's a balance between your work life and your personal life it's really flat like you can contact your manager if you need his help or anything you don't have to go you know in a hierarchical way a hierarchical way so you can contact anyone uh, you like who which in which you think you need help in your work uh, so yeah it's, it's really flat and uh, they are uh, really very kind and friendly so they will help you in your work as much as they can I don't think I dislike anything in the Danish work culture because as I said they, they they are balanced your personal life and your work life is completely balanced and they also have this uh, parties once a while and little fun little playing games so you know yeah it, it's quite very nice you get free coffee tea and everything you have a very good canteen a very international canteen and you get food for very cheap there so yeah, I think I like everything about Danish work culture because you, you are not you're not given too much stress in your work. The work is equally divided in team. Like I mentioned in my previous videos, they teach you to work in team uh, when you are in your education. So the similar thing happens when you are working. The work is divided in the team, so you do not feel stressed or you do not get all the load. And if you feel stressed, you can contact your manager directly and they will help you in getting out of stress or giving you some leaves and everything. So I think I, I like everything about Danish work culture. They are quite uh, you know, supportive. Yes. So do you have like a job search visa after study if you immediately don't have a job? If yes, then how then can you work full time during the job search period? Uh, yes, actually, if you when you are graduated, you have six months time to find a full time job. So if you find a job, then well and good, your student visa will be converted into work permit but if you don't find a job in those six months then you will have to apply for establishment visa and that is for two years then your visa is extended for two more years to help you finding some kind of job here uh, but you need to show 90,000 90, Danish crowns in your bank account for getting that establishment visa and also when you complete your education there are there are, you know, companies here which help you in finding job in Denmark. So you go to those uh, job center uh, in your municipality and your name is linked with that job center and they will invite you for uh, business meetings and everything. So actually they help you a lot in finding job in and preparing your CV and preparing your resume and clicking a professional pictures of picture of yours so yes yes they help a lot in finding job okay and can you work full time when you are in that job search period or like i mean 
before you get a job i mean full by full time i mean like uh, maybe if the maximum work limit is 40 hours and uh, uh, like you get something part time which can be like 30 hours or 35 hours or maybe 40 hours also but it is part time uh, so is it possible to have that even if you don't have an employment contract but you are in the job search period or the establishment period yes you can have a maximum of 20 hours per week so you, when you have that uh, six months uh, when you, you are done with a master's and you are finding that job, then you are still on your student visa. So you can work around 20 hours per week in that time. But after six months, when you apply for establishment visa, then if you find a full time job, then it's OK. And if you find a part time job, then you can work as as much as you want. OK. And this 20 hour is also the limit for any student who is doing a part time job per week. Yes, yes. It's, a, okay. it's a limit when you have a student visa, when you are here in Denmark on student visa. OK. Uh, OK, so what are the basic requirements to apply for a job in Denmark? And maybe like you can highlight some of the important websites. We'll obviously put them in the, the description below. Uh, one more question to add to it. Does LinkedIn play any role? Because in every place we hear, have a good LinkedIn profile, find some alumni, contact recruiters, send some direct messages, or what is your experience? Yes, actually LinkedIn is very important when you come to Scandinavian countries because network for them is everything. So if you have a good network, then it's really, really easy to find a job. For example, if you have a if you have a good connection with a Danish man who is working in a con in a company, and uh, then it's really uh, easy for you to get the job rather than uh, applying by yourself and not having any connection. So they give preferences to the references. So the more references you have, the better for you. And also some of the job finding um, links are like Job Index, Glassdoor. So these are some links which uh, yeah, somebody said he could mention in the description. So yeah, you can check out those links. OK, and apart from doing a master's in any university in Denmark, do you feel like there should be any specific requirements or something you should already build to have a good profile when you are applying for uh, jobs? Uh, yes, I, I think if you have uh, some very good recommendations in your LinkedIn profile, then it works really, really good. Uh, then the recruiter can always see that how you worked for other co other companies and how your relations with people are. So I think you when you come here, you sh the first thing you should do is to make your LinkedIn profile and connect with as much as people you know and ask them to recommend to write a recommendation in your profile so that would help you in finding a part-time job here okay uh, so does internship help in finding jobs like the internships that you do during your study period does it help you when you apply for jobs or maybe getting a job in the same company what's your experience yes internships are very important part of danish culture so when you are in your third semester, you have a choice if you want to go for internship or you want to start your master thesis. I decided to go for internship and I, I decided to start my master thesis in fourth semester, which is uh, 30 ECTS. But some people, they start their master thesis in third semester, which is 40 ECTS. So it's a choice. But I feel when you do the internship, then you create network and you create bonding with people, you know about the company, you get a practical experience. So you have a very uh, strong point to mention in your LinkedIn or in your CV or resume. Yes, so I think um, in my personal point of view, internship helps you a lot in, in finding a future full-time job. You create a lot of network there. So is there any language or cultural barrier when you are applying for jobs? Like, uh, for example, uh, in Netherlands, I don't think they have they have that requirement to know Dutch in most of the jobs when you're applying. But in Germany, which I always compare, 
you need a german cv and most of the interviews are also in german so what is the experience or what is the procedure in denmark when you are applying for jobs in terms of the language and cultural barrier yes it's more or less same like germany uh, there are few companies which uh, take you even if you speak only english but most of the companies want you to speak both english and danish so when you come to denmark i would like to say you start your danish education it's completely free here the government support you to learn the danish they have made it free this year but when i came you had to pay to learn danish but now they have made it free again so take use of that system and start learning danish because i would say around 70% of the companies want you to speak danish and english both yes. and the cvs do should they be like tailor made in danish or in english cv is also okay uh it depends if uh, if the company ask you to write a cv in english then you write in english but if the job description in, is in danish like uh when now i'm searching job most of the job description are in danish so it's uh, obvious that you need to write your cv and resume in danish danish so but yeah that, that that's a little bit uh, you know i would say a minus point that you need to learn a, a learn a new language here to work here but uh, but yeah many companies like danfoss and uh, some other companies they hire you even if you speak english because they are international companies but local companies are really focused on hiring the people who can speak their language okay so when you were studying masters you mentioned in the previous videos that you also worked in danfoss so in that uh, with reference to that so do you have like have you ever faced any kind of uh, need of the language or any kind of language or cultural barrier when working in those companies uh, i did not face any type of language or cultural barriers in my professional work like working for companies but you definitely feel a little barrier in at, at lunch table you know when all the employees are sitting and uh, most of them are danish so they start talking in danish and uh, they do can do do they do have conversations with you but very few you know because yeah, they're more comfortable in their own language so yes i mean i i felt it sometimes but not not so often because they talk with me as well on the lunch table in english but it's really good if you can speak danish with them so yes but in work in working um, culture i didn't face any kind of barrier uh, in my language or in my culture there was there was no barrier because as i said they all they can speak english as well very fluent danes speak english very fluent so there is no barrier but obviously if you speak danish then it makes your work life more easier your integration to the society more easier moving on to the next question which is the important one because people are always focused on the numbers the salary so what is the average salary for freshers and experienced professionals in denmark like what's the range yeah um as i said you denmark is the country where you pay the highest tax in the world so when you are a fresher you get get around uh, between somewhere between 36 to 38000 danish crowns per month before taxes but as i said you pay around 40 to 50% in taxes the higher salary you get the higher taxes you pay so after taxes it will be around 20 to 21000 danish crowns so it's like that okay. for freshers and for professionals like i really don't know but yes their salary are very good but they also pay the highest taxes they pay around 60% tax from their salary so yes the, the salary is really really good here and the standard of living in the scandinavian countries is really good as all of you know so the salary so, is yeah good. okay so roughly if i take like uh, you mentioned like it's 20 to 30000 after tax on hand right the range not 30 you can say 20 to 25000 after okay tax. yes okay so for if, a mechatronics uh, masters engineer okay so if you take into account like the cost of living then i would assume like you would spend around 25 or 30% of what you get every month on hand 
in your living expenses? Uh, yes, because when you get a job, uh, most of the people want to buy a car, then you have to pay the tax in car as well and insurance in car. And when you get your own house, then you pay, then you have to pay an insurance for that house as well. For example, something happens in your house, like your window is broken, a door is broken or, or your heat heater is exploded or something like that then you have to pay insurances as well you have to then pay accident insurance and everything so i think yes around 40% uh, you will spend on these insurances living and food and everything yes yeah. 30 to 40% yes okay but still it's a good deal like you can yes. if you plan then you can easily it is possible to save at least greater than equal to 50% or yes. greater than equal to 55% of yeah. what you get on hand yeah. if you are an individual. Yes, yes. It is okay. easily possible, yes. Because even if you have kids, you don't have to pay for their education. The education is completely free here. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. That's a very good point. So moving to the final two questions. Uh, how much can you earn per hour when you are working in a part-time job? Uh, I mean, it will obviously be mostly for students, but you should also know that whenever you don't have a job or you're in the search process, then how much can you expect to earn per hour roughly when you are doing a part-time job? Yeah, as I was uh, doing a part-time job in Danfoss, I cannot uh, disclose my actual salary, but I can tell you uh, that when you work for a multinational company, uh, an engineering company, then you then you earn something between 140 to 150 Danish crowns per hour. But if you work in restaurants or in a bar or a cleaning assistant or something like that, then you earn between 100 to 120 Danish crowns per hour. Okay. Thank you, Anjali, for giving your time on a weekend to help everyone out there who wants to come to study in Denmark and then work in Denmark. So I hope you like this video. Then don't forget to smash the like button, share this video, help each other out, subscribe to the channel. So, yeah, we already ended the five video series. You can check the previous four videos to get a full overview of studying in Denmark, getting a scholarship, the cost of living and working in Denmark. So till next video series all over Europe, uh, stay tuned and I will see you in upcoming vlogs. Till then, bye. Bye and good luck to everyone who want to come to Denmark. <laughs>